Um, for your sakes, I'm doing this on the carpet instead of on the cement so it doesn't sound like uh, fingers on a chalkboard. But I want to show a few changes that I've made to the prototype stove. First thing I want to mention is that if you haven't watched the first video, you'll notice my welds are not that great. And I'd mentioned that in the first video, but some people hadn't watched it completely and mentioned that. So just to prove that I can weld decently, and I'm self-taught, so I'm not saying it's uh, perfect or anything like that, but I welded on this flue, and as you can see, you're, I, I didn't have a positioner, so I had to start and stop, move around a few times. But I can weld decently when I want to. Um, let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it a little better. So if I want to spend the time on it and do it, I can. Um, this is a prototype. I don't really care, so I haven't. Um, this piece of t tubing up here is uh, quite heavy. It's actually some drill pipe. And you can see it's all worn out on the inside. It was the only 3-inch pipe that my local uh, supplier had on hand. And I got it for free, so I'm not too worried about it. It's just a test. Um, you'll notice a big hole on the side of this. I'm not going to do this on the main stove, the real stove, but I'm still trying to test the secondary burn. I, I, I really want a secondary burn going on in the stove um, so I can get, uh, you know, just more bang for your buck when you're, you're uh, burning wood, especially on a stove this small. And what I'm going to do is put a piece of Neoceram glass right here. Neoceram, here's a piece of it right here, is... 1500 degree fireproof fireproof ceramic glass basically um, and it's actually very expensive locally it's about thirty eight dollars a square foot and they have a one dollar square foot minimum I told them to go in their scrap pile and find a small piece even if it was scratched and let me buy that I used to work for them so I knew they had them and um, I was able to get this piece for ten bucks which is actually a pretty good deal so I don't have to pay for the thirty eight dollar minimum Anyway, I'm going to cut that down as soon as I get my glass cutter um, and I'll uh, adhere it with some high temp silicone, which will take a couple of hours to cure before I can try it. And then when I'm done, I might be able to even cut it off and use it on another one, another stove. What I plan on doing is moving it to the front door. I, I would like to cut this latch. I'm not going to do it on the prototype, but I'd like to shorten this latch right here and then put a small window in this area and you know allow the user to see what's going on on the inside I think that would be really nice um, so we'll go ahead and do that another change that I made and this is just on the prototype is that you remember the secondary air intake trying to get it to uh, do that secondary burn well I want to test it individually independent of the second area that I created so I just put these little flaps on here so I can open and close them the other one is down here on this side. I can open and close it and test them individually. Um, inside, this this tube right here is coming from this area, and that tube back there, which is kind of hard to see, is coming from this one. Um, one of the changes I didn't mention in the previous video that I had made was the were these nuts. I took a couple of nuts and just welded them on here and here, just did a little plug weld on, on the center of them. And the reason why I did that was to prevent this latch from falling this way and from falling too far back the other way. And I really like that. I, I did have a little spot weld here to try to accomplish the same thing, but I didn't like it. It was ugly. I like this much better. The final change that I've made on the stove for tonight, until I can uh, get the glass cut for this, the ceramic I should say, is you'll notice that this uh, latch piece right here is angled and it was straight but I noticed that when this gets hot it expands enough that I was having a hard time opening and closing this without grabbing it, grabbing it with a pair of pliers down here so I put this angle on it so I can uh, shut it uh, at a variable in it, some type of variable degree depending on how hot it is um, when it's cold if I want to leave the door slightly ajar I can um, by doing that but as it warms up I can shut it as far as I need to in the cold position as it is now I can shut it all the way and and get a nice seal on there again I have some uh, fiberglass rope for the door on the final product that I plan on building the final version of this um, not the prototype version and I will go ahead and apply that um, one thing I did want to note is you'll it's kinda of probably hard to tell in the video but 
this is bowed out here and this side is bowed out here. I didn't get any bowing on the in, on the top or the front other than uh, the door gets kind of tight. Didn't get any on the back. Um, the bottom's too hard to tell, but I, I don't think I got any in the bottom, but I did get some bowing on the sides. That doesn't bother me, but um, if you want to, you can throw a piece of angle iron or something along the side like this, like you see on the ammo cans, and that'll help, but I plan on building this out of much thicker plate than what I have here. This is 16 gauge, and I plan on using maybe around eighth inch to quarter inch, uh, depending on you know which one I want to try. I don't know. I may try both. And anyway, that's just something to keep in mind, but this stove's coming along, and if I can get the secondary burn to work, then I'm going to move away from the prototype and build the final version, and I'll have a video on that.